to chapter 5 and talking about banking. Those of you who have checking accounts and savings accounts now, this chapter will be a breeze for you and not necessarily a breeze, it will be a refresher. A lot of you now, juniors and seniors, you should be looking at getting your first checking and savings account. And I think that's an important step for you to make. Most of you probably have savings accounts from your parents or guardians. You should probably ask them and to see if you have an account in your name. But by the time you become seniors, you should open up your first checking and savings account. And I believe you have to turn 18 to do so. So, Chapter 5, Banking. We're going to cover the services banks offer and its benefits, and also the benefits of a checking and a savings account. So section 5.1, financial services and institutions, and going right into the financial services that banks provide. Three main categories, we're going to go into detail on each one. Banks provide you the ability to set up a savings account in which you save money. They also give you the ability for payment services in which you can pay from your checking account to another company to buy a product and they also banks allow you to borrow whether you borrow a loan for college for a house for a car etc okay and just know we say check an account if you're unsure what that means check an account is an account that you have money in that you use almost every day so think of instead of carrying cash on you you put it in a checking account and you use a check your checking account every day for your purchases and with a checking account, you get a debit card. And you use, that, you use that to swipe. You can use it as debit or credit. You can use it as a credit card, but it's not really a credit card. So just a little background knowledge before we go into more detail. And we'll touch on that as well. So with savings, all right, you go to the bank. One of the services they provide is a savings account. It's a safe storage of funds for future needs you kind of put money in here every time you get paid remember we talked about when you get paid the first first thing you should do is save think of it as you're paying yourself again and even if you start putting just a little bit amounts now that you're 17 18 it's a skill and a habit that you'll create so when you're making good money after you graduate college and you, or if you get your first job right after high school it's a habit that you'll create and it will be second nature. Savings accounts allow money to grow because with savings accounts you earn an interest rate and in this instance interest rate being good. You put your money in there and after every year you earn interest and you earn additional income on top of whatever you have in your savings account. So it allows your money to grow and just another term that we associate with savings is called time deposit. It's money left on the deposit for months or years. Okay, time, when you hear time, think of savings. You put your money in the savings account and you're not going to touch it for a while. You're just gonna let that grow and just keep money, putting money in there every pay period, every pay period, every paycheck. And hopefully when you need it for really big purchases, say a house or a car, or for retirement, you have a large amount there for you at that time. Payment services, so this is the second financial service that banks provide. Payment services is transferring money from your personal account to a business or individual. Key phrase here for payment. So essentially to buy things. An example is when you write a check to buy something or if you swipe your debit card to buy something, that's payment. That is using payment services of a bank. And a term that associates with payment services, similar to time deposit, this is demand deposit. Think about on demand, you can have your money at any time. On demand, you can spend your money at any time. All right? Demand deposit is just means money placed in a checking account that you can with withdraw at any time. On demand. It's your money on demand whenever you want. Okay? So we have our savings. We have our payment services. That goes along with a checking account. And lastly... Borrowing, okay, when you go to a bank to pay for a house or a car or your student loans, you are borrowing, right, and that's the last financial service that banks provide. When you borrow money, and that means that you have credit, whenever you hear the word credit, it means you are have borrowed money. Whatever the amount that you need to borrow, 
that's how much you are borrowing, you have to pay that amount back and interest. Okay, so a quick example, as I believe I sold this example before, Grand Pool College was about $20,000 a year. I was there for four years. $20,000 times four is $80,000. That's how much I had to borrow from the bank. But the cost to borrow that money, banks charge me an interest because banks need to make some money out of this as well. They're just not going to break even. They're not just going to give me $80,000 and then take back $80,000 and not make anything off this. So that's why banks charge interest. So whenever you borrow money, you have to pay that money back and the interest. You can get a short-term credit, short-term loan. For example, if your parents have credit cards, maybe you have a credit card. That is a short-term loan that you have to pay back. And if you don't, you get hit with a high interest rate. We have a chapter on credit cards that we'll go into. And you can get also a long-term credit or borrow for the long term whether that be mortgage remember mortgage paying off your house or auto loan to pay off for your car so three main financial services that banks provide now banks are going electronic and there was a time where there was no apps where you can you can deposit checks through your phone you could check your account on your phone it was done all by hand only recently with the rise in smartphones as now a lot of banking is taking place online and especially through your mobile devices with these online services you can look at your account information you can look at statements you could pay your bills online you could transfer your funds you probably have seen your parents deposit checks with their phones you could just take a picture and it already goes into your account you don't really have to go to the bank anymore all right also with electronic banking services you can make automatic payments in which money is automatically taken out of your account if any of your parents have easy pass that would be an example where it is set up with your checking account that easy easy pass takes an amount out when your funds are low every single month or when you need it okay I have my college loan set up is that every time I get paid they take out a certain amount automatically if any of you have Netflix, Netflix takes the money out every single month automatically. If you have Xbox Live, I believe it's $60 a year, they take that amount out automatically. So when you have automatic payments set up, you just want to make sure you have enough money in your account and you want to check that when the company takes their money out of your account, you want to make sure that the proper amount was sent from your account to that company. So just some homework that you need to do. And lastly, direct deposit. And what direct deposit is, is it's an automatic deposit from your net pay to your bank. So when you get paid from work, you think you can get a check, in which I have to sign it and go to a bank and cash it myself, or I can get direct deposit. So when JFK pays me, it goes right into my account. I don't have to get a paycheck, sign it, go to the bank and cash it at the bank. When you all start your first jobs, I highly recommend setting up direct deposit. It saves you time, saves money, because some check cashing places cost you money to cash your check, and it also saves you a whole lot of effort. It's seamlessly done for you, and it's very easy to set up and do. So, the electronic banking services, here are just a few that banks offer to continue we have, of course, our ATMs or automated teller machines in which you can withdraw cash. Now, you can even deposit. Some ATMs, you can walk up to an ATM and put your cash in there and deposit it for you. So, a new feature of ATMs where it were just to be, just to with, withdraw money. And also with ATMs, you can go into an ATM and also transfer your money from, say, your checking to your savings or from your savings to your checking. I just recently had to do that myself. With ATMs, however, and when you decide on a bank, you want to consider fees. Some banks may charge you a fee for using another bank's ATM. So a quick example, I used to have TD Bank. A fee TD had is if I use, say, a Bank of America ATM because there are no TD Bank ATMs 
in my area, TD Bank would hit me with a fee, say a five or six dollar fee on top of whatever the amount of money I'm taking out of my account. I just switched over to PNC Bank last June, and if I go to any other ATM that's not PNC, I don't get hit with a fee. So I can go to a Bank America ATM, use my PNC card, and I don't get hit with a fee. More complicated than that, but that's the premise of it. So you want to consider and compare fees when you're looking at banks, because you do use ATMs a lot. But if you go to your own bank's ATM, so if I had PNC and I go to a PNC ATM, I don't pay a fee either. So it's only when you use other branches or other banks' ATMs, you want to look at those fees. Debit card, that is the card that you get when you set up a checking account. It requires a PIN, uh, usually a four-digit number. Memorize your PIN, never give your PIN out. But when you set up a checking account, you receive a debit card. Okay. Also, when you have a savings account, it, it, is, it is on your debit card as well. So you can access either or. Um, but usually with checking accounts, they're on your debit card. You have a PIN. If you ever lose your debit card, call the bank immediately. So they can either, one, freeze your account, which it will be on hold so in case anyone comes across your debit card and tries to use it. They can't. Or they could just cancel your account. You'll still have your money. They'll just create a new account for you. Usually they may charge you, I know PNC, the one time I lost my debit card, charged me $7 for a new card, very low fee, and I was fine with it. So, all the electronic banking services, and lastly, you can either open an account up at a bank or a credit union. Banks or commercial banks, they are for profit. They're in business to make money. And you know a bunch of commercial banks, TD Bank, Bank of America, PNC, Chase, tons of them. All those commercial banks, and you see the commercials on TV, they are for-profit institutions. They're there to make money. They offer a full range of services, from checking accounts, savings accounts, to letting you borrow money. They offer the full range, but they are there to make money. They make a lot of their money off the high interest fees that they charge you and also just fees in general a fee to purchase checks if you need them ATM fees etc in comparison to credit unions credit unions are nonprofit it's owned by its members and it's organized for their benefit so they have may they may have lower interest rates for their members an example nearby is the Central Jersey Credit Union they do offer, they most of them offer full range of services and it is up to debate on whether you would like a commercial bank or credit union. Commercial banks, if you have a business or for yourself, you can set up an account. They are a lot more convenient just because there's so many of them out there. TD Bank, PNC, there's so many PNCs and so many TD Banks out there where credit unions, they're not as convenient. So something that you need to consider when you want to open up your first checking or savings account.